All right, guys, now we're going to jump into lighting. So go ahead and just close your workspace and let's check out what we can do for lighting. So we have the lighting property itself, atmosphere, sky, bloom, depth of field, and sun rays. So Roblox starts us off pretty dark and pretty gloomy. I'm just going to add some really nice vibrant colors into this and that'll just really warm up the, the world and give us some nice colors that feel a little bit more fun and natural. After all, this is a game. Next, we're going to hop into atmosphere. Let's give it a little bit of a haze. Usually don't go more than two. And a little bit of glare to just help it be a bit more natural. And here again, we're going to just add some more colors to kind of, you know, bring it into the natural aspect of the map. Your density is how foggy it is. Usually players like to have this pretty low because it can get really obstructive. I'm just gonna turn off the offset. I don't know what that does. Your sky is your sky box. Um, under here, it's pretty cool. You can actually change the size of your sun. So if you want a really big sun, you can <laughs> for whatever reason. You can also change the size of the moon. Next under bloom. This is how things glow. So I'm going to use our skills from last video to make a neon part to see how the bloom affects it. So if I disable bloom, you guys won't see anything yet, but you can actually make your bloom more or less effective. And this is really helpful if you want your neon parts to be less blinding and just like, you know, glow a little bit less intensely. So, you know, you can make the bloom super low and gentle or if you're crazy, you can have super, super bright, uh, super bright bloom and that'll just blind people. So, you know, there's the two extremes there. You can have it nice and low or super high. And, you know, even at the high point, the beds are starting to glow, which is gross. <laughs> Depth of field is how you see things from a distance. So, you know, you can make your distance really, really blurry and you can make the you know intensity raise it now our background looks super super blurry um you can change the focus distance so it can be super close or super far um and here the in focus radius is how close to the player it would be so super close bloom you know stuff like this is really good for camera effects i wouldn't actually use this in a game it is pretty harsh on the eyes and it can make people's eyes water so i just turn that off and our sun rays are pretty fun because this is, you know, kind of like a visual. Just makes makes your game nice and pretty, especially if you have lots of trees, the sun will shine through it. We usually turn the intensity pretty low down, but you can turn up the spread quite a bit and it'll just shine through objects if you have them really nicely. So this is how I would get a pretty aesthetic lighting. Just mess around with colors. Try to avoid black and white because it won't actually add a lot of life into your game. Okay, next, before we hop into plugins, let's learn about the Roblox toolbox. This is a really amazing tool that all beginners really should use because this is how you just, you can just play in studio, really. It is a really fun playing tool. So right away, your toolbox is accessed through your view bar. It's right there. So you just click it to open it up and in the toolbox, anybody, even Roblox, uploads a lot of different official tools that work in a game. And the high quality tools have this little badge on them so you know it's safe. Be really careful with this because some people upload virus injected stuff and you just don't want that in your studio. So for example, I see Anime Island and this inserts a whole new skybox and it changes the lighting of the world and it's really cool. Or anime sky, it'll do the same thing. You know, you insert that, it'll just really change the lighting. So it's pretty cool to have skyboxes here. You can also just, you know, look around here and click on whatever you want. And you can add objects and see how they work and how you actually get to play around with them is when you access test and press play, you will actually be inserted with your own character and you can try interacting with these tools. So that's super fun. And to stop, you'll press the stop button and 
we go back to our toolbox. So you can really insert anything. There's a search tool here. So if I want to find a Sakura tree, for example, this is a really great tool for beginners. I would highly recommend this. There's no shame in using the toolbox because a lot of people started out on Roblox by learning with the toolbox. Okay guys, next it's plugin time. I love plugins because they're so helpful for making my development process faster. So let's open and manage our plugins. This is how you can get more plugins and update existing plugins. So these are all the ones I have and when they update, make sure you hit that update all button. But you can turn your plugins on or off and click the blue button here to add more plugins. Here you'll be taken to a site with plugins that are available. Some of these are free and some of these cost Robux. So do keep that in mind. There's people who actually do rely on plugins for a source of income. So it's, it's good that some of these do cost money and we respect that. So some of the plugins I use, for example, mesh optimization tools. Um, I use some rig editing tools UGC asset creation tools, load character tools, F3X extra building tools, model resizing tools, and just a bunch of different tools that really help my development process and make it go by a lot faster and smoother. Okay, let's say I want to download a tool. Let's click on what I can afford. So this Archimedes plugin, make sure you read what the plugin does. Make sure you really check that it has a lot of upvotes and that people say that it's a good plugin, it's not a scam. All you have to do is click install and check that out. It automatically added itself and I can see it in my plugin management. So say I don't really want to work with this right now, I'll just turn it off and I can check it out later. But I do want to check it out. So you'll click on whatever the plugin is and it'll add itself to your workspace. So all plugins actually work like this. They will add a little, you know, a tool to your workspace and whatever you're interacting with, um, this tool will help you do that. So it's really awesome. And you just click them again to uh, turn them off. All right, guys, next, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about studio optimization. This is really important for making sure our games run fast. If you're working with a coder, they should always have streaming enabled, but let's look into how we can spot this. So I have my mesh optimization tool here and I'm going to show the geometry. So here we can see this isn't really that efficient. We want, we imagine players for this will be running through and they won't need to interact with this. So the game doesn't need to know that the player actually collides with this. So under collisions, I will turn off can collide, query, touch, and I'll also make this a box because the game doesn't need to know that this is a high fidelity mesh because they're not interacting with it. Not only that, but I will turn off cast shadow, I'll turn off double sided, and I'll make the render fidelity performance. Wherever you can in your games, you want to make sure you follow those rules. And let's say the player needs to collide with something. So let's say they need to collide with this branch. That's totally fine. I would keep can collide on, but instead make my collision fidelity box and I'll turn off can touch. Can touch is really only for scripting purposes if the player actually needs to interact with that object. So again here, I turn off cast shadow and make the render fidelity performance. Sometimes it won't let you and that's just because it's already low poly. So if it's staying precise, don't worry about it too much. So that is the behavior and the game performance that we wanna look for when interacting, when the player is interacting with something that they do or don't need to collide with. Finally, for us artists, we always have to be modeling in low poly as much as we can because our assets will have fewer vertices, edges, and faces, which makes them easier for the Roblox game engine to render. This is really important because it improves our game performance, especially on low-end devices or games that are using a lot of copy and pasted objects. Lower poly objects load faster. And also we really can get a really cool aesthetic and kind of like personalized, stylized look with low poly. 
Not only that, but low poly is also incredibly very beginner friendly. So once we start moving into the 3D modeling, we'll have a really awesome and fun time with that. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching in on this video. The next video will be going over attachments, beams and trails for waterfalls and other cool effects, workspace specific lighting and optimization, and particle effects in general. So stay tuned if you are interested in any of that and do like and subscribe. I appreciate you and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.